I can. Uh, first off, just a thought on your defense uh, with how close is Chris Russell? Um, uh, he doesn't look like based on your rotations he's in yet. Uh, no. Um, well, first of all, Garrison has the flu, so he's out. Um, as is Kajula. They're both out with the flu. Um, that draws uh, Weidman in. And uh, Chris uh, skated before the break. And then... Uh, Obviously, he skated aggressively. He's doing extra work now. Our assumption on Chris is that he's a player on the 29th or 31st. We're hoping for that. And it's trending towards there. But this is the first real um, extra skate he's got. He's been kind of partaking in morning skates on his own. But this is the first time with the group. So if he passes the test today, then he practices full tomorrow. And then we're assuming he's ready on the 29th or 31st. Did you say Kajula can't? The yeah, yeah, he's out. He's, um, he's got the same ailment as Garrison. You've had looks of, of McDavid and Dreisaitl together. You've had looks of them apart on separate lines. Your decision whether or not to play them together, is it it's uh, it's based? Based, or? based on J.J. coming back in. So J.J. comes back in. We loved the line of Nugent Hopkins, J.J. and Pilarvi. Uh, and our hope is to get back to that line after today's game. Uh, it was a great line for us, uh, put a lot of pressure on people, scored, did everything that you want in the second line. And I know it's moving a couple of guys on the wing up a little bit, but we think it's capable of playing a 200-foot game and getting better offensively as we move on. So the anticipation is we've got one more game to play like this. that We've put Pulley RV back with, with Nuge to, uh, to get that acclimated, and then uh, hopefully J.J. comes in, he's ready to go. Ken, after you played Vancouver before the break, you, you made a comment along the line that it was one of the few times or maybe the first time you saw some frustration in, in the Oilers game about trying to get through what Vancouver was doing. How do you avoid that frustration tonight? What do they do that can, can create that frustration? Well, they did the same thing to Winnipeg, probably even worse. I mean, they all played Winnipeg badly, uh, and Winnipeg's a top team in the league. They're on top of their game. Vancouver's on top of their checking game. Their group of defensemen is playing as well as anybody in the West right now. Their goaltending's making big saves, but even then, they're not getting many shots against. I, looking back on it, I, I, don't, I don't want to say I misspoke, but I, I look back at the game, and five on five, we played way better than I thought we did, way better. And there's a lot of things we can draw on from that game, five on five, but we gave up three power play goals, I think. And... Uh, they took advantage of it, but I thought five on five, our, the scoring chances were much in our favor, and we did a lot better things than I thought. But we had, in saying that, we still had struggles to get to the inside. And the same struggles we had, Winnipeg had. And even Tampa had a lot of struggles to get to the inside. They're defending very well. They've got, they've got maturity and strength in that group back there, and they make it hard on you. And so they're you get frustrated because you don't get any time in the offensive zone. They're out and gone, and they've got a lot of quickness up front. So they're playing, to me, as good a team game as anybody in the West right now, and we're going to have to break that down. But, but looking back on the game tape, you know, I got to look at it unemotionally yesterday. We did a lot of really good things that we can build on from there. Yeah, I, I don't think the neutral zone is being a problem for us against them. It has been for other teams, but I thought we did a good job where we couldn't get to the inside at all in the offensive zone, but we got more to the inside than I thought we did. But still in saying that, they, they can test every puck. They got size and mobility back there, and they can test every puck. They, they make you pay a price if you want to score. Good teams do that. Ken, in your experience, what's the toughest part about the four-day break and coming back from that break? I don't think it's coming back. I, I, you know, the first game back, it, it's like the first game of the season. You know, it, it's usually, it's got some great play and it's got some bizarreness in it. You just move forward. I think the big thing is, this is so competitive and so close in the West. Uh, to me, whoever embraces details, whoever embraces all the little us stuff is going to end up getting in a playoff spot. And I want that to be us. Everybody's got, you know, we're one of the teams that have got the injuries now. But... A week from now, it might be somebody else. Two weeks from now, we could be healthy. Who knows? But I want us to embrace all the us things that need to take place if you want to be a playoff team. And, and for us to do that, we've got to start doing some of the harder things 
that are required to win games for longer periods of time. And you look at the games we've played that we've lost, we had each team right where we wanted at the halfway point. We played great. We did exactly what we wanted to with 30 minutes gone in the game, and we were the first team to crack. And same thing against Tampa. We, we played a perfect second period, five on five. We played a perfect second period, and then we made a couple of mistakes. They took advantage of it. Same thing in Vancouver. Vancouver, there's 12 minutes gone in the second period, and we've played as good as we can play. And we're playing great, but then we made mistakes and took penalties, and they took advantage of it. Those are things that have to get corrected. You talk about wanting to play inside, Ken. Your, your Brodziak line has had good zone time. You know, they create four check, they create turnovers, but they're not getting results around the net. A lot of times, you know, they'll, they'll have the puck in possession, but it never ends up getting to the front of the net to score. How do, you, how do you take that next step to try to get some offense from that line when they have contained offensive pressure? Uh, I'm not sure I agree with that statement, but and the reason is they, they don't get enough uh, always own time for me for the way they're built. It's a big body line that should just dominate and there's not enough shots on goal, there's not enough pucks at the net, there's not enough chaos. And the few times there is, it's really hard on teams. Like, you look at three shifts in Vancouver game, that's the consistency we're looking for from that line. If that line plays that consistent level of chaotic hockey, which is pucks to the net, bodies to the net, pucks deep, if they have that mentality, I don't think there's a line in the league that can play with them as far as big body hockey. I don't think you can check that line because it's, they've got size, weight, and, and enough skill to move it around. But when they play next play hockey, next play meaning I'm going to pass off shooting opportunities, then they allow smaller, quicker people to be involved. And that's what they've done the last little while. They, their best game they played was in Vancouver. And that was exactly what we needed from them. But in the last two games, they've gotten away from that. They saw that on their tape today, they looked at. And I think they recognize the way they have to play to be successful. I have no doubt that they can finish. I have no doubt that those guys can score. I've seen Brodziak score. I've coached against Lucic and Cash. I know what Lucic can do. But he's not going to do it with the limited opportunities they're getting offensively. There's not near enough. They need way more off offensive opportunities if they expect to score. And hopefully what they saw on tape today, they can draw from that. Ken, as an opposing coach, what do you think of Elias Pedersen? Um, well, not just him, but that line, especially those two guys, uh, 6 and 40. They're, they're so, two of the most dangerous players. Like, there's dangerous players on cycle. There's dangerous players on the rush. Dangerous players on turnover. They're, they're, they're dangerous in all three aspects. If you make a puck error, they don't miss on offensive opportunities on odd man rushes. They don't miss on two on ones, and they don't miss on three on twos. And in zone, they have really good, close, smart support, so they always get to the inside. But to me, where they're really dangerous is when you turn it over and you make a puck error in the offensive zone, they're gone. And their anticipation on 50-50 pucks is as good as anybody in the league. So to me, they're, they're a line that makes you nervous even when you have the puck, Jim. And that's a very unique dynamic to have. And, you know, Vancouver's lucky they got them because they're going to be players like this for a long, long time. Itch, uh, just further on Pedersen, the one thing that really amazed us, he, he wasn't this one-dimensional offensive guy. He was tripping guys through the neutral zone on the back check. He was going all the way back into his own zone to trigger the transition. Can you coach that in a young player, or is that just something ingrained in a player to be that aware in all three zones? Well, I know Greener will take it, credit for it, but it, he, it, it came a long time ago. I'm just kidding on Greener. But it came a long time ago. It's very similar to us with Pilarby. Like, there's things that Jesse does. Somebody taught him when he was 12, 13, 14, 15 years of age. The same things happened to Pedersen. To me, you, you, that stuff's ingrained in you a long, long time ago. And we're lucky we got a guy like Jesse who does this stuff naturally. And, uh, and obviously, Peterson's a guy that does it naturally. But that gets taught long, long before we get them. Thanks, Thanks. Okay.